As an artist, it takes a deep spirit, healthy body, and an inspired mind, a voice to speak up and really express yourself, to know who you are, to be able to make a real impact that touches people's lives. A full life of trials and challenges go hand in hand along with one's gifts. Today, our guest is jazz vocalist, Elisa Fiorello. They don't trust you. They think every you're having a party every night. Oh if yeah. You're up till three in the morning singing. Oh, that's a party. Oh yeah. Forget the fact that your feet are killing you and you need Red Bulls to stay awake. You know, yeah. like, yeah. so at least with Carlos, I, he understood who I was. He, he didn't, mm. He didn't stop me from being myself and he didn't stop me from singing and he was proud of me and like all that stuff combined with buttering my bread, pushed it over the top. <laughs> I said, you want to see each other again? And he's like, well, I don't know if you like nice people, nice guys. I go, yeah, I tend to go for the bad ones, but I'll give this nice thing a try, I think. And it ended up, we, we fell in love. Today, our guest is jazz vocalist, Elisa Fiorello. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> person. <laughs> uh. At the age of 15, this is so amazing, you guys. At the age of 15, Elisa won 1985 Star Search. I remember it was amazing. And in 1987, she was signed to Chrysalis. Sounds like a dream. Okay, all you artists out there think it's just magic. And it feels like it when you don't know. She first she first performed the song Jackie on the summer school soundtrack and caught the eye of Jelly Bean Benitas, which I love. Soundtrack that caught, yeah that caught his eye. That was that was the one. So then she um, he asked her to be um, a lead vocalist on two of the songs in eighty seven, actually called Just Visiting This Planet. Uh, one of the songs Who Found You was a hit worldwide reaching top 20 in many countries in addition to being a cross club success. She released her first or second album, which is I Am, in 1990 recorded at Prince's Paisley Park Recording Studios. That must've been amazing. Mm -hmm. She was a contributing backing vocalist to the soundtrack of Graffiti Bridge and Batman. My favorite was On The Way Up, <laughs> which was at the top 30 hit in the U.S., top 20 in Australia. She also appeared on Prince's album, Diamonds and Pearls, and much more. We could spend hours talking about how your career has not only inspired other people, but just kicked ass, you badass. So welcome, Elisa. I'm a badass. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love the name of your show. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's Glenda Music and Badass Goddess. So I'm I'm doing a little bit of both. And awesome. I love the opportunity to really feature women that have really stood for something, not only their own passion. And um, I know that your career has been a really interesting one and it's kind of had its ups and downs you've been married you have a child you know you've had to deal with a lot of things through your art form and um that is just so impressive and I know there's so many questions I want to ask but I know we only have a short amount of time um but what I really wanted to know was um what was that moment when you said I want to sing I want to do music and and why like for you what was that I think the moment happened when I was about eight or nine years old. Um, I remember putting on a record. It was actually Diana Ross. Okay. <laughs> and it was, uh, it's my house and I live here. I want to tell you that. So I got this like attitude, like it's my house. <laughs> and I'd run around my, my living room and I had a cup that I would sing in where, you know, the cup would echo. So it sounded like a microphone. And we even had like a bay window and I'd open the curtains and it would be, I was the star of the show. So it all started then. And I, I, I remember listening to records going, Hey, if she can have a record deal, I can. Wow, so that's beautiful. that was kind of where it started <laughs> very young. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I think there's a lot to be said about that. Yes. Um, you hear about that from a lot of artists where there, there's something early on where they just go, no, I want that. Like, yeah. I, I want that. I'm going to have that, you know? <laughs> It's interesting having a 16 year old and my daughter has that bug too now, but it's interesting watching a lot of other kids 
that just have no idea what they want and where they want to be in their life yeah. and what, they, what their passion is. So when you have that, that early, you just yeah. know, you just know that that's why you're here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I've always known that. And the only problem I've ever had is that I've liked to sing everything. So having that, you know, one track mind, as far as which direction I was going, always confused me because when I first got my record deal, I went into that label and I said, I want to be Streisand. And they looked at me like, you're 16 years old. No, you're going to do dance records. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to do dance records. They're like, in time, in time, you can make that album later. So I said, yes, okay, fine. And, and did the record and then met Jelly Bean and then turned into the dance artist that I was. And you know, all along, I, I loved it. But at the same time, it, there was a part of me just going, oh, I just want to sing with a big band or a, you know, mm -hmm. trio or something. Just I wanted to be musical. Yeah. And I felt like I was so constricted within the beat to make, you know, you know how it is because you sing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you have to stay within the beat. You can't experiment. You can't hold things longer. It all has to be within a beat. So yeah, that that kind of got to me. And I kind of wished I would have gone that road, stood my ground, but at 16, you have, you don't have that conviction or maturity to like yeah. yourself. And that's funny that you said that. Cause I was going to ask that question, you know, like when you walk through those doors for the first time at 15, 16 years old, 16, um, were you alone? Did you have a manager? Did they assign you? A like, how did that, like, what was that learning curve and what was the stress out? So it was my mother. Okay. And my mother had no idea about the music business. So it was kind of funny because I remember going out for dinner with like the, the label guys and the, the promotion guys. And my mom would sit there and she'd have a couple glasses of wine and they would be talking to her and just kissing up to her. And I'd be sitting, I was sitting there like, mom, I'm looking, I'm seeing right through this, aren't you? And, and she'd be like, oh, they're going to take care of you. And I, I remember saying, mom, you don't know what you're doing. So then I ended up firing my mom and boy, that did, <laughs> well, that did not go over well. <laughs> After all I've done for you. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Did I you have fire mom? Did you have an alternative though? Like, did you know, like yes, where to look? Because the record company kind of wow. suggested that I should talk to, uh, there was Barry Josephson, Stan Morris and Herb Nanis who were big yeah. time. Yeah. They managed Dolly Parton and all these other great uh, people. So I ended up going with them at first. And then I ended up with a guy named Michael Lipman who uh, he was a big time manager for uh, George Michael and them. So yeah, I, I moved around with the managers and boy, there were some slimy creatures out there. Uh, it's it, it was quite a wake up call. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the music business. <laughs> yeah, right. So when, so then they, they, did you, did you just release singles? I mean, did you, or did they? I actually released an album. Uh, the first album, they sent me to London and I worked with a songwriter because I told them I'm, I write songs and they sent me there to write with a, a man named Ian Prince. Mm. Um, and uh, we worked for months. We worked on all these songs. I came back and then they ended up putting other writers with me and we ended up putting like a mishmash of songs together. Um, the first record, I actually got to work with Reggie Lucas, who mm. was Madonna's first. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Lucky Star, Borderline, all those. Right. So I ended up doing a lot of stuff in New York and, and then the Jelly Bean thing happened. So it kind of the Jelly Bean product kind of overshadowed my first record a little bit because mm -hmm. it was really about who found who. Um, and then after that, when I worked with Prince, it was mainly I was there for David Z, who was going to produce me. Uh, he had worked with the Fine Young Cannibals and Jody Watley and the Jets. So they put me there. I hadn't met Prince and like three months into working with David, Prince walked in. I was singing in the studio. He said, that's you. I said, yes. He goes, prove it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I went in there, I sang my heart out and he's like, meet me in Studio B. I want you to sing on something. So I ended wow. up singing on the Batman soundtrack and then he had me singing on Graffiti Bridge then I ended up singing on Diamonds and Pearls album with Rosie Gaines. Wow. So it was an amazing experience. Yeah. And just it's it's crazy when I think that I've been in Prince's life two times in my lifetime. Yeah. You know, it it's, it's enough that it's once, but then right. 
20 years later, he calls me back and says, you want to sing? And I'm sitting in Vegas going, I'm not really doing much here. I just had a baby and uh, I really want to sing, but nobody's hiring me. And he mm. hired me. Wow. So that was a blessing. That it, it It's crazy how lost I was at that mm. time. And I felt like I was done and I wasn't singing again. And how Prince just kind of picked me back up like an angel and said, no, mm. no, no, no this is your dream. You need to sing, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I've always thought of him as my angel. Mm. Wow. Yep. Wow. That's, that's incredible. And so now I know you were, you work with them for about six years, right? You got, were you on yeah. tour for six years? Yeah, I was okay. on tour for five years, actually, 2009 okay. to 2014. And then you just said, I got and then home. he said, he changed bands like he changed underwear. Yeah. So he had the third eye girl and then he was wanting to do the piano thing. And so it was interesting on a, a, like our second to last gig together with the band. He said, he called me and he said, you write, you write great. And I said, well, thank you. And, and he had taken a couple of my songs and he actually bought them from me. Okay. I was going to ask he, if you got credit. Because he said he, <laughs> but he didn't make me sign anything. Mm. So he like basically just gave me money because he knew I wasn't going to be working. And he knew that I had a daughter and he okay. knew that by doing that, not only would he boost my ego as a writer, because <laughs> it made me feel good that he liked my songs, yeah. but he was giving me something monetary so that I could figure out what I was going to do next. So it's like, he set me up. Gotcha. So, gotcha. um, yeah. Are you, have you continued to write? Are you? Oh yeah. So yeah. during COVID, that's all I did with right. my husband, my new husband. I'm recently married, got right. a ring on it, uh, in October and he's amazing, a bass player, singer, and oh. just the best. And we write great together. So oh, that's beautiful. we've written like 13 songs and pretty much have a whole album ready to record. So great. Yeah. Great. Awesome. And then, and you guys live in Vegas. So we live in Vegas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. Um, so I was going to ask you too, um, your life as an artist and a mother, mm -hmm. what's been your consistent mantra to balance your spirit in your career? Hmm. Pretty much never give up. That's the one <laughs> main thing. And I, it, it takes a minute for me to figure out what I really want because I do go in so many different directions. Um, yeah. So I had a really great jazz gig the other day in Laguna Beach at the Arts Festival. Yeah. And I hadn't done a jazz gig in so long and I was so excited about it, right? After I did it, I had that long drive home and I sat there and I just thought, okay, what are you doing next? Are you really going to go jazz now or are you going to stick with the soulful project that you're working on and then I'm like I can do both why not Lady Gaga does both right right completely <laughs> completely so I love singing soul and I love you know R&B yeah. but then I love jazz and then when I sing jazz I throw R&B and soul into my jazz totally totally so it's like all it all works it's just I don't want to sell tickets for Soulful and then do a jazz gig and then ruin the ticket sales for Soulful, you know? <laughs> yeah. Spread Hold them out. The busy ass. I got to yeah. spread out the gigs. Yeah. <laughs> so gosh, yeah, we're, we're so alike. I just think that's so crazy. And I, and I don't know about you, but because I came up through doing so many styles of music and I like so many things that it was really confusing because yes. you're just like, aren't, am I supposed to be like in a, a box. <laughs> a box. And then everyone's like going, no, no, it's like great that you're not. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah. Okay. What era am I from? You know, I'm like, it's oh great no. great for jingle work because then yeah. you can do everything. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but like you, I mean, I, I, which I think is really amazing. Your, your soulful group uh, with a D train. Um, and I think you guys kind of, um, I think the, the next one is the 21st, right. That's of this, this month. Yes. Yeah. And it's, um, and you're, is it like a donation to Potastic or something? Potastic. So we, I think we, that's so cool. I love yeah, it. We, we definitely wanted to bring in some charities to kind of give back. Yeah. I, my, my thought marketing wise, and it's true, we get our soul full with the music and we fill yeah. souls that need it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And for those of you out there, like listening, um, it's kind of like, um, 
Shaka Khan, Marvin Gaye, right? Roberta mm-hmm. Flack, Aretha Franklin, that kind of oh, vibe, yeah. right? Right, oh, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, I wish I was close, I'd come. <laughs> I know, and we're doing, uh, you'll appreciate this one, I'm sure you know it. Um, I actually sang backgrounds for uh, Denise Williams when she oh, was here in Vegas. Wow. So we do free. Oh my uh-huh. God. Uh, uh, well, how does it go? I, went, I started singing Ohio Players Free. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, no, please don't let me forget the lyrics. <laughs> in his ear my magic potion for love yes nice Telling him I yeah oh yummy yes, i love it <laughs> beautiful oh your voice is so sweet so gorgeous <laughs> wow well um so i'm gonna of course i'm gonna give your website and everything so people can actually go not only to your website, but go ahead and buy tickets and stuff, right? Yes. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be uh, the industrial. Is that right? Yes, the industrial okay. event center. Yep. Down so there. that'll be great. And so whoever's local can come and see you. If not, uh, do you think it will be online or will they, someone film it or live stream? No, or? we're going to, um, we've, we've been filming our shows. So we're trying to put together like a little reel of some kind so that we can book it again and try right. it. Exactly. More with it because too many people need to say this it's too much fun exactly and I, my, my thought was I know I don't like doing the same show twice so I want to find a venue where we do one show a month and every month it's a new set love so it the people that love soulful will go come back next month because it's gonna be a whole new show uh and I learned that from Prince because we never did the same show twice That's and it great. was He'd call set list right before we went on stage and we're like, oh my God, God. listen to that song in ages. Let's, let's remember the backgrounds, you know, <laughs> oh my, oh my God. God. The tapes and Shelby would always have her little tapes and I'd have my notes and we'd just oh cram God. it right before we went on. Wow. But it brought us up to this level of professionalism and, you know, ethics, Amazing. work ethic to just be right on point. Wow. It had to be, (laughs) or you'd get that look. (laughs) You'd get that. (laughs) You don't want that look. (laughs) No, I guess not. It's like, (laughs) bye-bye. Oh gosh. Um, So um, what else? There's so many questions I want to ask, but um, I'm probably going to ask them offline. Um, (laughs) um, It's none of your business. No, Um, (laughs) the questions I want to ask. No. um, So um, I have a series of questions that I love to ask, and then you get to just fill it in, right? Mm -hmm. So um, one thing you do, what's one thing you do to make a difference? I... I smile a lot. Yeah. And I think that energy is just so important. Yeah. So I try to bring light and energy to everybody I'm near. Mm. Mm. That's huge. That's really huge. Huge on the planet right now. We Mm -hmm. we all need that. You're really doing your work. I really feel it. (laughs) Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Wow. Hmm. <laughs> deal, deal with Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, to be honest, the first, the most adventurous thing I think I've done, and it was recent, was my honeymoon. We went to Maui and my husband used to live there. So he took me to, oh, gosh, I can't think of the name of it, but it was a beautiful drive. And he ended up saying, let's go take a little hike. And we had flip-flops on and it, it had rained like tons before we had gotten there and we were taking this hike and like trees were down and I felt like Indiana Jones jumping over these things with flip-flops sliding in the mud so that's probably the most adventurous I've been (laughs) I'm not one of those that jump out of planes I hate planes I hate flying I'm like this on an airplane so yeah that would probably be the most adventurous thing I've done lately (laughs) a hike (laughs) How how did you meet your husband So I met my husband, Carlos, in 2005, when I first moved to Vegas. I came here, I went to an agency that booked talent. And and I had just given birth, so I had the belly still and everything. And I walked in and he took one look at me and he's like, sorry, I can't book you. And I'm like, I worked with Prince, I worked with Jellybean, I worked with this. 
He's like, yeah, it's not really my thing. Um, I book bands. I'm like, yeah, but I'm a singer and can go in any band you have. I, I can sing, you know? Right. I just, it felt so awful to be in that position to have to yeah. convince people, right? Oh and he said, but my coworker, you know, he works for me, he books all the talent. He does a lot of jazz. I go, perfect, that's who I need. So I met him and Carlos was working for him. And he immediately booked me, loved my singing and we just stayed friends for 13 years. And then when my husband passed away, oh. I, I was very angry at the situation because he ended up committing suicide, oh, my husband. I'm so sorry. And my daughter, who was only 13, witnessed it. And it just, it just made me to the point where I was angry at, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't going to stop my life and I wasn't going to blame myself. You know, I did blame myself for a little bit because our relationship wasn't perfect. But I'm like, you know what, leave me, you don't leave your daughter, you know, so that's where I said, I got to brush it off, I got to move on, there is life to live, and I've got to live it. And I, I was invited to an art gallery, and I didn't want to go alone. And the only person in my phone that I trusted and thought, oh, he would be safe was Carlos. <laughs> so he's like, sure, I'll go. So we went and then we got hungry. We went to dinner and he buttered my bread and that was all it took. Yeah. And I'm like, how is buttering my bread so attractive? And it's because I was in a marriage where it mm. wasn't, it was always about him and never about making me feel loved. Yeah. It was yeah. about constantly reassuring him that, yes, I'm going on the road, but I'm good. I'm not doing this, you know, like, you yeah. know how it is. People don't yeah. like when people go on the road. They don't trust you. They think every you're having a party every night. Oh if yeah, you're up till three in the morning singing. Oh, that's a party. Oh well, yeah. Forget the fact that your feet are killing you and you need Red Bulls to stay awake. You know, yeah. like yeah. so. At least with Carlos, I, he understood who I was. He he didn't mm. he didn't stop me from being myself, and he didn't stop me from singing. And he was proud of me and like all that stuff combined with buttering my bread, pushed it over the top. <laughs> I said, you want to see each other again? And he's like, well, I don't know if you like nice people, nice guys. I go, yeah, I tend to go for the bad ones, but I'll give this nice thing a try, I think. And it ended up, we, we fell in love. My daughter fell in love with him and wow. it, he has five children. And so now I have two grandchildren with one baby boy on the way. Wow. So it's just like this huge family that I've always wanted. That wow. It suits your Italian nature. It's such an Italian <laughs> thing. And I've yes. had to teach them all. You got to cook your noodles. You can't make them too soft. We got in a fight exactly. about that. One of the daughters and I, she overcooked noodles once and oh, she, I got all she? upset at her. And she didn't <laughs> understand. And I'm like, you have to understand. It's like, it's so important to make your noodles hard. <laughs> it's dente. so important. <laughs> El dente. Yes. <laughs> yes. But With anyway. sauce, a lot of sauce. We, we, we've worked through the noodle situation, so we're good. <laughs> That's great. That's so great. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you came out the other side of that. Uh, and, yes. Um, yes. I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. I'm so glad. Wow. Yeah. It shows. It gives yep. so much to people too. Yeah. So, okay. Guilty pleasure. Ooh. Food in general, <laughs> pasta, <laughs> chocolate, and cheese, oh. and bread, and oh. butter. Oh. And I'm, I, I am a little bit of a foodie, and it, it, and it doesn't go well when you're getting older and your metabolism <laughs> starts to shut down. Yeah, you're not so. on tour for, you know, like eight weeks, you know, right. or a month, and you're like, you know, <laughs> or you lose weight immediately. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gotcha. I love so that, it. That would be my pleasure. I, I've never been a big drinker. I've never done drugs. I've never yeah. been like a, any kind of a holic of any kind, except right. for food. Food, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. Oh gosh, you are my yeah. sister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Best piece of advice you'd got that you ever got. Sorry. Okay. This would have been, would have been from my first manager. Actually my, was she my first? No, she was my second manager, Debbie Caponetta. So I was notoriously late for everything. And she sat me down one day and I was what, 19, something like that. And she said, the world does not revolve around you. 
you need to check yourself and show up when you say you're going to show up because these people they don't care about waiting for you you're not the whole world doesn't revolve so ever since then i've been really trying my hardest not to be late places but but more or less it's it made me real i had like a little bit of an ego starting to happen where yeah. i felt that way i had record deals i was getting limos picking me up at school i mean i could have gone the whole other direction yeah but i was very fortunate to have her in my life and a good solid family mm -hmm. kind of keeping me level headed yeah. gotcha so that i didn't go that way and I and the one thing I didn't like about the business is that they were very they're even the record company would say don't bring your boyfriend around you have to appear single mm. and I I was like what, what is this like fake like what am I what am I doing here yeah. and I would do gigs and they were they'd tell me do not fraternize with the people in the audience so I'd go back to my room sit there by myself all these people all my age having fun and I'm in a room going this sucks you know mm. like I really was lonely on the road wow. and it wasn't like men get groupies and they do all that women men don't come up to you as much exactly they're so afraid. I was very lonely <laughs> i totally get it yeah. you know and if they you know i was thinking about that too that you said that it's like yeah the 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 band members guy band members you know they sleep with whoever they want right boy right. if us ladies did that you're like oh, a whore boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> like how many men do i sleep with you know i mean especially when you're on like a long tour right oh, i mean yeah you could just do somebody every exactly. night you know if it was available <laughs> I was and, like, and i was the totally true italian so every time we got oh. a, a hotel i'm like can we get a place with a kitchen i need to cook I can't be just yeah. eating out all the time. I really yeah. want to cook. I want to make food, you know, and yeah. cook for my dancer friends and get them all to come over just because I was lonely. Yeah. I remember crying to my dad. I'm like, if this is what music's about, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. No, <laughs> I totally it, got and then it. With Prince, I remember sitting with him, say, looking at his life and thinking, mm. gosh, you're so sheltered. And everybody around you just says yes to you, no matter what. Yeah. And that was one of the things that connected us is because I wasn't that way with him. Yeah. And he loved that I was honest yeah. and told him like it is. And he got a kick out of it because he hadn't had many people like that. Yeah. And that's why I think he remembered me after all that time. Yeah. Especially from an early age. I mean, oh, yeah. he, he too, like you, was Same a age. young artist, yes. you know? And so, yeah, you come from a dysfunctional family into mm -hmm. now I, I'm going to get all the girls, you right. know, and mm -hmm. I get to express myself however I want and everyone else do what I want, you know, it's like, right, right. <laughs> and so you're like, you're 40 years old and everyone's still doing what, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, totally, you, you miss something Yes, as, yes. as a human being, you don't get to grow or evolve, whereas right you know, you had a, you had a segment, but you also got to grow and evolve and have a husband and a life and, you know, just right. take that time out, you know, yeah. whereas some artists, especially like him, they didn't, didn't, did yeah. not. And, and dysfunctional, like, don't, I, I don't know how to handle a, a conflict with right. a oh, female totally. partner. Well, that's funny. You said that. Cause I remember when I was 19 and I was working with Prince, I was having fights with my mother and every time I'd bring it up to him, he'd say, oh, I don't discuss problems. We don't have problems here. Interesting. And I'd be like, wow. And wow. So if we were in a relationship, I could never really talk to you. <laughs> so right. It sucks. I, no, we, we just have sex and then I yeah, can go away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. And I just, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. And then later on, when I worked with him and I was on tour, I had my husband, who was an artist, do that picture right there. Wow. Him. It's a drawing. It's a chart. You're kidding. And That's... I framed it. I had it all ready and I gave it to him and he wouldn't even look at it. Jealous. And he, and he said, he handed it to me and he, as he was leaving the room and he said, besides, I don't have a home or a family. So mm. I don't have a home to hang it in. And wow. I said, wow. Okay. And I'm supposed to feel bad. Right. And that's your choice. You, yeah. You had many things <laughs> I didn't have. That's right. <laughs> so it was interesting. That was yeah. an interesting comment. Yeah. I think, I think that is interesting because it really does, you know, for the longest time, I think, you know, I've been in music since I was like 14 um, mm -hmm. professionally. 
too. And it's one of those things like, oh, I never made it, you know? Yeah. And then you buy the press, you know what I mean? Right. And then I, and then I finally got to a point where um, I was standing at Medem in the South of France and I looked down and I started crying. And I realized at that moment that I, in that world, I had missed the boat 20 years prior. Right. Right. But mm -hmm. that there was something more for me oh, and, yeah. then, and deeper mm -hmm. and, and people need this now. Oh and, yeah. And right. It's like, how can oh, you yeah. be a leader or a role model if you have no idea how to and, be? And a... that, that's something I struggled with for a long time. Like even with gigs, you know, you invite yeah. your friends, you invite all these people and everybody says they're coming and then they don't come. Right. And you're so hurt and so upset. Yes because you want to show them. Yes. And then, and then someone said to me another good word of advice, the people who are supposed to be there are going to be there. Yeah. And so I will look around the room and I'm like, you know what, maybe it's not sold out, but there are a hundred people in here and they all want to be here. That's so I'm right. going to give them everything I can and bring up their level of energy to a better level and a higher yes. level. Yes. absolutely. And that's all it's about. So sometimes yeah. the intimate stuff is even better way you know, better. Yeah. You know, I love that. And I, I know Prince, Prince loved that too. Yeah. The big arenas and the problems with sound and, you know, engineers yeah. and monitors. And he loved to go after show parties and do those smaller clubs where he could hear himself and he could yeah. just get loose. And the, the vibe from the audience was right there in front of us and we could feel them and they could feel us. Totally. Those were the moments. And yep. Any Prince fan will say that it's yeah. all the after shows <laughs> were the best. Those last minute, let's do this, you know. Oh yeah. And yeah. he'd go till six in the morning. <laughs> wow. Wow. Red Bulls and feet killing you. And I'm right. having a party. Yeah. I'm really having a great time. <laughs> I mean, I had fun singing, but boy, was I tired. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Wow. What a life well lived. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one last question for you and I need, need you to, Finish the sentence. Okay. If I could, I would do a jazz record and perform in festivals in Europe and be on the Grammys again one day, <laughs> selling my album. <laughs> Yay. That's what I would do. Okay. It's funny because that's the first thing that came to my mind. That's great. And it's done. 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 I done. put it out there. It's you got out. it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Elisa. Elisa uh -huh. Fiorello, you thank are you. such a delight and a beautiful, beautiful badass goddess woman, um, yes. such a leader and an inspiration. Uh -huh. And um, thank you for taking the time to be with us and me. And uh, thank look, you for having me. <laughs> I look forward to supporting you more. Thank All you. Right. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye for now.